Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness uh, Synagogue Parish and Church. A minister and prophet, M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Thank you, Father, for sending your inner spirit, yourself, inner self, your Yeshua El Shaddai. Well, 2,000 years it took a form of a man, temporary man of, of this world, took a form of a, of a body and, 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 and lowered himself three times, the word of God says, for our benefits to, to break the, the evil covenant where we were in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, broke that through the cross of Calvary. He broke the, the old covenant that mankind entered into a long ago when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and that was broken on the cross that day when you you died on the cross resurrected on the third day for us all and that covenant of satan was broken and now we're under the covenant full covenant that is explained from genesis of revelation and and we are eat symbolically of the tree of life which is Yeshua all along because Adam and Eve were in all of God's creation all the angelic creations um, are have a piece of Yeshua in them all the angels including the born again mankind the womankind of the demic race of this world amen everything does and that's the connection to the living God is through the Spirit of God, which is Yeshua. Which the churches and synagogues and the parish deny who Yeshua really is. Because there's a veil of Satan that, that he put over you. So that your traditions are what you go by and you make them what you read. When you look at the word, you, you get you, you have a veil over your life. And that veil is gonna be rendered. That veil that, that is over the church and the synagogue parish, and it's over all the world. For the last 500, the five, 500 years, there's been a veil over the people in general. So they don't see. They only see what, what they're, they, Satan wants them to see. And your, the traditions and your, and, and, your non-religious experience with God has caused this in your churches and synagogue. Your ministers better get on your knees and understand who Yeshua really is. You never asked yourself, who is he before he became in the flesh? And who is he now? He told you all along, he's the spirit of the living God. He talked in third party about his own self. Because what is said about him when he was birthed into into that earth suit as it says the spirit of god went into mary and became a, a a child became a that was him he there's no separation the popacy the false popacy of this world which there's only one popacy that's jesus christ yeshua hamashiach the false popacy which their antichrist earthly popacies they rewritten the idea of these things and you have not gotten rid of these things out of your parishes and churches and synagogues you have allowed these traditions to stay you've been lied to of that that all these bef uh, men and women of the past have taking you forward out of that no they have not they brought you other traditions within that and kept some of those traditions and because of this you've been you've been you've been in the veil you've been a veil of your traditions a veil of your surmisings of what the word of god and this is what has happened. But the Father God in 2024 will break the veil over all humanity, including the churches and synagogues, because there's been a veil over you for too long. 500 years, a veil that Satan has placed on this world. 
because they have gone by traditions of men and women, not tradition, traditions of the living God. And it's through relationship that you know the living God. You know the, the Savior. And it's through relationship you know one another. Not through tradition, not through spoken aura of things. But through relationship. And it's when you're born again, when you're truly born again, in spirit filled with the spirit of Yeshua or El Shaddai. Then that relationship is what you go by. That relationship helps you go forward and, and helps you understand the word of God, helps you understand everything in life, life itself, because the life itself is supposed to live in you. The life of God is Yeshua and it needs to live in you. And then you need to be honorable for what the Father has for your life and spoken to you from the beginning when you were a living soul being sent down to that mother's womb. There's life before you see it. And this is why it's the number one sin of the heavens to kill a baby in the womb. Because it has life, it has a soul that you do not see. That, and a, a begotten spirit is given to it when it's in the mother's womb. And then life, the DNA of the father, the mother, and a lot of times the grandpa, grandparents, all the way back, all that DNA comes together to make that physical body. And it takes a while, it takes uh, seven to nine months for all that to develop into what we know is a baby that comes out. A fetus, the word fetus means little one, roughly translated. All along, it's 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 a it's a baby, whether in or out of the womb. Satan has lied to you and made many people kill their own babies, and therefore the murder is is on your hands. That murdering of that child is on your hands, and Satan has a way to come in now. And destroy your life. And he won't destroy your life unless you get saved. Unless you ask forgiveness of what you did. Because if you don't, you, there's a place waiting in hell. Where you'll be tortured for and ever. For, for destroying a life that is innocent. That has not had any time to do one sin. Like cry out of the womb. Or any of these things. It's a perfect and Satan loves to destroy what is perfect because he loves the unperfectness of humanity when they're out of the womb. So he wants to destroy what is perfect in the womb. Because Satan is jealous of what is perfect because he's not perfect. He's far from it. He's, he's unperfect. And he's trying to make it, mankind as unperfect as possible, including the churches and synagogue and parishes. Because you do not go by relationship, your churches and synagogue and parish are in error. Because you don't allow the spirit of Yeshua in your life, you're in error. And because of this, the, the whole concept of what your ministers preach is all wrong. Because they're not in a relationship, they're in tradition, they're in the, they're, they're what, what they think it is. Instead of what Yeshua reveals it to be because he's the word of God the life of God and he has to reveal it to you and you do not allow him because you rather go by your man-made ideas what the word of God says instead of allowing him to show you what it really says because he's the author and finisher of Genesis of Revelation that give given forth breath by by those he picked to write these things that are already in the heartbeat of the Father God to Yeshua, to, to the writers that he chose to, to express it to you today. And so we thank you, Father, we praise you. Amen. Amen. So you take that divineness that the Father spoke through me and Yeshua spoke through me in prayer today. Very beautiful. 
they are and, and they do it the way they want to. And when you learn to move in the spirit of Yeshua and, and whenever he speaks, whenever he gives a word or something, you listen. You, he'll test you. He'll test you in odd areas to see if you are obedient to the call. He'll test you. He'll, he'll, you'll be doing something. And Yeshua will poke your heart and you'll know it's him. And he's going to see if you are worthy of the cost of your relationship to drop what you're doing. And take that moment to listen to the spirit, sweet spirit of God, Yeshua, what he's saying to you in your heart, in your mind. Amen. Listen to these things, for they're important. For the Father and Yeshua will test his children to see if they're truly worthy to be children of God. Are they, are they more worthy of the worldly things than the heavenly things that will last forever? For the, these worldly things of this world will pass away, surely, very soon. But the things of God's kingdom will last forever. And the real test is, is what are you, kingdom are you in? The kingdom that's passing away soon of this world? Or the kingdom that will last forever, God's kingdom? In today's study, we're going to go in the Torah, or Torah, uh, good teachings. Also, down the line means laws of God. Good teachings. Bershabet, um, post-Genesis, basically anything 13 to 50, 50 is, is post-Genesis, is after the beginning of creation. So 1 through 12 is expressing the pre-creation of things. And we're and, and today's study said Yosef, Joseph, Genesis chapter 39, 1 through 23, and 40 of 1 through 23. 1 through 23 of 40, of 1 through 23 of 29. Of Genesis, amen. Yosef was brought down to Egypt, to Potiphar, an officer of the Pharaoh and captain of the guards. And the Egyptians brought him from the Ishmaelites who had, who had brought him there. And Yah was with Yosef. And, and and God wants to be with you today, amen. It's like it was with Yosef, but you gotta be obedient. You gotta be obedient to the call. Look at all the things that Yosef always went through. He got his his feet beat. He has his his brothers rejected him. He they threw him in a dirty well that was full of garbage and mud. All of them he's probably didn't get to bathe at all. All this time. Can you imagine? In your life, might 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 not be as bad as Yosef, you you know. But we all grow through the same things. The Word of God is showing us all these different beautiful men and women, and even the bad ones that we need to watch out for and not repeat the the error of, of those that were bad as well. There's. There's two things in the Word of God that are prominent. And that's that's the, the storylines that were real of men and women that were good and bad, good things that we need to do that they did, and the bad things we need to reject that and try not to repeat those things. And then the, the learning part of the Word of God, those are the two main things that you'll find in the Word of God. It's about people, good and bad, and the learning part of it. And we have to embrace both sides of the Word of God there. And so he was brought, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. And Yah was with Yosef, and he wants to be with you too. And uh, he became wealthy while he was in the house of his master of the Egyptians. And his master saw how Yah was with 
Yosef. And Yah prospered everything that Yosef did. And Yosef pleased him and he served him. And his master appointed him master of his household. See, when you go through the hardship of things, blessings going to come your way one way or another. Amen. Just like it did for Yosef. Amen. And what does the word of God say? He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. And also it says in the word of God that if you take care of the little things, you you bring better things to you eventually. He entrusted all his possessions to Yosef. From the time he appointed him the 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 man the manager of his household and all his possessions and Yah blessed the Egyptians household for Yosef's sake amen he'll bless other people just for your sake cuz you're going to you're going to live that life of Joseph you're going to live that life of of Daniel amen you you're not going to allow satan to rob you from getting to point A to point B to point C. Amen. Because God Almighty has something for you. Just like he had something for Yosef. He's got something for each of our lives. If we only trust him. But a lot of you don't want to go through the process of things. The testings that each of us go through our lives. Amen. And Yosef pleased him as he served him, and his master appointed him man, a man, manager of the household. He trusted all his possessions to Yosef from the time he appointed him manager of his household and all his possessions. Yah blessed the Egyptians' household for Yosef's sake. And Yah blessed what was on his own, whether in the house or in the field. So he left all his possessions to Yosef's care because he had him. He paid no attention to his affairs except for the food that he ate. Now Yosef was, uh, was well built, handsome and, and well mannered. And the time of day came when his master's wife took and looked at Yosef and said, Sleep with me. But Yosef refused, saying to his master's wife, Look, because my master has me and doesn't know wh what is going on in the house and, and has put all the possessions in my charge. In this house I am equal, and he hasn't withheld anything with me except yourself because you are his wife how then could I do such wicked things and sin against God but she kept on pressing pressing on him day after day nevertheless Yosef did not listen to her and Yosef refused to sleep with her or even with look at her However, one day when he went into the house to do work and none of the men lived in the house was there in, indoors, she grabbed him by his robe and said, sleep with me. But he fled and le left his robe in her hands and got himself outside. When she saw that he had left his robe in her hands and escaped. She called on the men of the household and said to them, Look at this. My husband brought a Hebrew to make fools of us. And he came in and wanted to sleep with me. See, that's what lust does. Lust is a, turns into lies, into sin, and into wickedness and hurting others. And your own self, and this is what happened when the woman was was in the the valley of shadow of death of 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 this lust. And see, 
Yosef knew what it was. It was lust. It's not love. You, you know? And, and so he fled from that sin of lust that she was putting, trying to put on Yosef there. And he fled from it. And so he escaped from it. I'm not going to be part of you, little, a little she-devil. You know what I'm saying? And she called, and then she said, and then she, so she was in lust, so she called, and she called on the men of the household and said to them, look this, this, my husband brought a Hebrew to make fools of us. She, I mean, she went and, and, and downplayed the whole, a uh, holy people, Hebrews on top of it. And he came and, and wanted to sleep with me. But I yelled out loud, um, and when he, he heard me yell like that, he left the, his robe with me and, I, and, and ran out. And she put the robe aside until the master came home and then said to him, this Hebrew uh, employee brought us and came to make a fool of me. But then I yelled out and left. He left his robe with me and fled outside. And his ma this master heard his wife and said, "She showed him, and and here's what your employee did to me." But and he became fierce. And Yosef's master took him, put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were kept and there he was in prison so he went from really nice place to a real not nice place yep but it doesn't end there god was not done with yosef and he's not done with any of us either amen he's got he's gonna sculpt us he's we're on the potter's will and he's scoping he's he's making the the beautiful vessel called Yosef, and he's making that beautiful vessel called us today, amen, and every day. But Yah was with Yosef, and he wants to be with you too. Showing Yosef grace and giving him favor in the sight of the prison warden. The prison warden made Yosef supervisor of all the prisons, prison of the prisoners, so that when Whenever they did there, he was in charge of it. The prison warden paid no attention to anything Yosef did. Why would they not pay? To? Because they knew that he was sincere. They knew he was honest. They knew he was real. So you got to get real. You got to let God make the raw, essential you and, and be a real person with who you are. And he also did, because Yah, Yah was with um, wherever he was, and he did. And Yah pro uh, protected him. And some time later, it came about the Egyptian king, cupbearer, and the baker ga gave an a, a offering to their lord and king of Egypt. And the pharaoh became angry with his two officers, and the chief cupbearer and the and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guards in the prison, in the same place where Yosef was kept. And the and the captain of the guards uh, ch was charge of uh, Yosef to be with them. And became their attendant while they were remaining in prison. And one night, and 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 two of them, the king, Egyptian's cup cupbearer and his baker, there in prison, both of them had a dream, each dream with its own meaning. And Yosef came into them in the morning and saw that they looked sad and he asked the pharaoh's officers there with him in the prison of his his uh, master's house why are you looking 
so sad today. And God is saying the same thing to you. Why are you looking so sad today? What is the purpose in life that God has for you? I mean, that's what's the echoing of this is the purpose, what God has for you. What, what, what kind of things can you do for others in the community, for, for your friends, for the stranger alike, amen? And this is what Yosef's doing. He's doing a destiny. I mean, he's going through things. Some things that maybe he won't have to go through as bad. But you un have to understand God has a destiny for our lives. And we've got to go with the flow and know that Satan's a liar. And he's going to try to throw things in our way. Because Satan, before he fell, was, was not a tempter, but a... Uh, 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 the opposite of that he was he was the angel of justice originally not the injustice that he became and so he went forth testing the people and angelic races and, and people to see if if they are, there's an error in them so they can correct it it was not something where you he does now which takes the error and, and magnifies it over the people and makes them go further into that error. He originally was the, uh, the angel that plucked out those things so that everybody remains in that perfectness that God has for their lives. And he fell from that and he took that and he reversed it. And that's what he is today. The injustice. Instead of being the, the angel of justice, he became the injustice, devil of hell that he is today, unfortunately. And so he does that. He, he, he goes and tries to trip people up. And God allows that because he uses that as, as a way to see if the person is genuine or not with what God has called them to do. And remember, he does not allow Satan to go too far. And he always pulls him back. There's the war of angels that go forth when, he, when Satan doesn't want to leave off on things. Like with Joseph, he didn't want to uh, leave off on him. Another one is, is, is Job, as you know. And, you know, and Peter was another one that, that Satan tried to magnify his things. But God... Through Yeshua told Peter, you're not a pebble anymore. You are a rock, a solid rock. Amen. God's trying to do that. He's trying to say you don't have to be a pebble. You can be like Peter. You can be a rock too. Amen. But back to Joseph here. Amen. Let's go back to Joseph because that's what we're reading about. Amen. But sometimes you got to explain things. A little bit okay so there's clarity we got to have clarity right and so sometimes you have to bear off on certain other things to bring some clarity where there needs to be amen it's important for your ministers to give clarity to bring forth that clarity and that wisdom that is needed so they don't they they don't see themselves in that story. They don't see themselves in what is being said in the Word of God to them. That will bring about clarity so they can take it forth and live it in, in, in reality of today as well as what it was when, it, when it's been read. Amen. Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, we each had a dream, and there is no one around to interpret it. And Yosef said to them, Don't, in, don't interpret uh, be, beyond in God. Tell it to me, please. And then the, uh, the chief uh, cupbearer told Yosef his dream. I, um, I had a dream, and there in front of me was a vine. And the vine was... was had three branches, and the, the branches of the buds, and then it suddenly began to blossom. Finally, the cluster of ripe grapes appeared, and the Pharaoh's cup was in his hand. So I took the grapes, pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup, and gave the cup to the Pharaoh, 
And Joseph said to him, Here is the interpretation. The three branches are three days. Within three days, the Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to the office. You will be given to the Pharaoh. And his cup, as you used to when you were a cupbearer. But remember me when, when you go well with you. And show me kindness and please. And mention it to the Pharaoh. So that he was released from me from the prison. For, for the trust is that I was, was uh, kidnapped from the land of the, the Hebrews. And there too I done nothing wrong. And, and, and justified in putting me in the dungeon. And when the cup chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Yosef, I too saw my dream, and there was three baskets of white bread on the, the head, and the uppermost basket there was all kinds of baking goods for the pharaoh. But the birds ate them out of my basket of my of my head. And and Yosef answered, Here is the interpretation. There are three baskets, three days. Within three days the Pharaoh will lift up your head from off you, and and will hang you from a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh off you. Because they have condors, real big condors, in in uh, in in that neck of the woods, um, and they do that. They're huge. Um, anyways, verse twenty. And on the third day, when the Pharaoh's birthday, he gave a party for his officers and lift up his head on the chief uh, cupbearer, and the head of the. Uh, and, and the chief baker uh, among his officers, he restored the, the chief cupbearer back into his position so that he, he uh, uh, gave the pharaoh his cup. But he charged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted. Nevertheless, the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot. That happens a lot. Forgetting things. But the, the main thing here is matter what situation you're in. And this is what Yosef did, and we need to learn from Yosef. The pattern Yosef had, whatever situation he got himself into, he didn't stop trusting God. He didn't stop trusting the Spirit of God. Amen. He kept trusting him when he was accused and he didn't do nothing wrong with that woman that, that she dealt with. And, and he wound himself in prison then. And then he, he kept trusting in God into prison and he became in charge of all of it pretty much. And and even though the, the cupbearer did not remember Yosef at the time, we we're going to see that God comes through and God, God's going to have to give a dream to, the, the, to the, the chief of chiefs of Egypt. Amen. We're going to see that in the next time. But we need to see the pattern of this and say, hey. And then we look at the pattern of a life. What Satan is the same yesterday and today forever of evil. He's always been trying to make you fall, stumble, and give you problems. But Yeshua will always bring victory to you. Just like he brought victory to Yosef. I mean, it, it does still looks a little grim, doesn't it? But you know what? God is always going to get us through each problem we have. He's going to get us to that, to that place where Yosef is going to get to. We're gonna, we're, we're, and the pattern is always the same throughout the Bible, no matter what... Um, Historic uh, story it is. It's always the same pattern. Satan trying to trap them all up. 
And then they're trusting God and, and, and Yeshua, Yasin and Yeshua are El Shaddai there to untrip them and, and, and make a way and bless them through those trials to the victory of where God called them to. Amen. Because you look at the life of Yosef, then you look at the life of Daniel, and you, you, you see a similar story, a very similar story, but two different men, two different situations, two different areas of the earth. You look at the story throughout, the historic stories throughout the Bible, and then you look at the historic things of today, of our lives, and you say, wow, Satan always is tripping, trip, trying to trip us up. You get his foot out there, try to trip us. But you know what? Yeshua's trying to help us go through those trials. And when it's time, it's time, it's when it's time. And it's time for a lot of us, for Jubilee. When you go into that, that year of Jubilee, of your life, and, and God says, you know what? No more of that garbage he's doing to you. No more of that, that, no more, no more he devil and she devil's trying to trip you up that Satan's using. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna get you now to that position they have called you since you were a child, amen. Of each of our lives, amen. This is the grace of God in the nutshell, amen. So each of us are like Joseph and Job's and and Mary's Magdalene that that you know, knowing Yeshua's feet in spite of what our situation is, Amen. And we need to keep anointing symbolically the feet of Yeshua, and remembering who the Father God is to us that He is a pure love of, a, and a and a justified God that loves us, that that is equal in every way. Of, of of justice as well as mercy, and and he loves us. And Yeshua died on the cross for us, so you need to get right if you're not right with him, and get the spirit of Yeshua in you. Pray this prayer. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank for Father God, Yeshua. Thank you for Father God. I accept you as my Savior, as my priest of priests, King of Kings, and and Master of Masters today. Thank you that your spirit dwells in me. And I'm baptized in your spirit right now. Thank you, Shu. I accept what you did on the cross. I accept that you died in, so you can wipe out the original curse of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that I can have the tree of life, your nature, in me. The hope of glory in me. Thank you, Shu, so much. Thank you, Father God. Your love was shown through your spirit that took flesh for me. Thank you that now I'm of the living Ark of the Covenant and I'm filled with the Spirit of Yeshua today. I'm the, I'm the tabernacle, not bell with hands. Amen. That you made each of us. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father God. I'm born again. I'm Spirit-filled. Amen. Say that one more time. Say it with all your heart. Say, I'm born again. Say that. I'm Spirit-filled with Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Father, Bless the blessings of God flow upon them. Angels of God be dispatched to them. An angel that will, will protect them. An angel will be, that will learn them of things. An angel that will represent in their prayer where they can't go. And another angel that will fill the gap in where they, is needed. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, for them. Thank you, Yeshua our Savior, the King of glory, of the Spirit of life that you are. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holy Spirit brings peace that passes all understanding. The King of peace, yeah, and the Prince of peace, Yeshua, be with you forevermore. Amen. Shalom. God bless. You can do it. You know you can. Don't be afraid. He says, my little flock, for I have overcome all things, even the little trust we have. Remember, he loves you. Shalom.